it's really sad and pathetic how many places support even more government power and overreach just to own somebody they don't like. The charm of cryptocurrencies for white supremacists. White power, dark money. TLDR, crypto bad because the government can't ban people from using it. Oh, we want the power to starve the people we don't like. We want the power to literally take their money away. And they're going to get that power sooner or later. And then it's going to be used on them. And then they're going to be crying oppression. It always happens this way. Those who support censorship implement systems of censorship. And then the other side takes them over and uses it on them. And they fucking cry about it. And they never learn. Never. On August 11th, current year minus five, far-right groups all over America came to Charlottesville, Virginia to protest against the removal of a Confederate statue. The next day, a white supremacist drove his car into a crowd of counter-protesters, killing one of them. In the aftermath, PayPal, an online payment platform whose terms of service forbid raising money to promote hate, suspended extremists' accounts. Yet they still have Antifa and Burn Loot Murder accounts. Double standards much. So did Apple Pay and Google Wallet, Visa and Discover. Two credit card firms followed suit, as did Patreon, a crowdfunding site. Far-right groups found themselves in search of other places to raise money. What many of them embraced was cryptocurrency. That's right. So we got to shut down the free market because people we don't like could use it. And then we're going to cry when this censorship comes back to bite us. The Southern Poverty Lie Center, an advocacy, no, an advocacy group? Like, what do they advocate for? Racism? Has identified over 600 cryptocurrency addresses used by members of the far right. They include ones associated with uh, Andrew Anglin, publisher of a neo Nazi website, The Daily Stormer. Andrew, uh, there's a lot of Andrews. Yeah, and, uh, Arnheimer, a white supremacist hacker, and Don Black, founder of a white power online forum. They advertise their wallets on their websites. Wow, you must have gone far and wide to find those addresses, huh? They're literally on the website. <laughs> you know, the advertising website and social media asking for donations, and they get them. Stefan Molyneux, a far-right podcaster who was out as, ousted from YouTube. He's about as milk toast as they come. Yeah, th this, is, uh, this is the example of uh, people being pushed to the right. Because uh, Stefan Molyneux would be a centrist by most reasonable standards. But the far left is pushing him to the right because anyone who's not far left is a Nazi. And they've received over $1.67 million in Bitcoin. Mr. Anglin has reportedly received over 100 Bitcoins or 3.8 million. So. <laughs> and and they, they fucking seethe and cope about this, don't they? Oh my God. The other side is more popular than us and making more money. The only people who advocate for censorship are those who can't win in a free market. They know that if there was no censorship, their ideas would be drowned out by better ones. So, so this is how they have to behave. About 16% of Americans hold and trade crypto, but the authors of a Southern Poverty Lie Center report published in December struggled to find a prominent American far-right figure without a cryptocurrency presence. You realize it's your fault, right? You guys pushed them into it. If they weren't getting deplatformed everywhere else, cryptocurrency wouldn't be on the rise like it is. Tim Squirrel of the Institute of Strategic Dialogue, a think tank concerned with extremism, unless it's Antifa and Burn Loot Murder, believes much of this has to do with deplatforming efforts. Yes, exactly. It's almost as if you, know, you keep deplatforming people and they'll keep finding alternatives. And then you bitch when these alternatives exist. That cryptocurrencies can be used by all appeals uh, to those cast out by payment platforms. But Bitcoin was not a panacea for far right groups because any transaction on the Bitcoin blockchain is public and transparent. Researchers with a long time uh, for a lo were for a long time able to monitor individuals dealings uh, once an anonymous wallet has been identified as belonging to a radical uh, right group or anyone who's not a radical leftist pretty much. 
neo-Nazi BTC tracker, a Twitter account created by John uh, Bambinick, a cyber threat expert, chronicled transactions in real time for three years. Technological advances in crypto have since made privacy tokens like Monero, which had transactions possible. These groups have probably flocked to them, which means they're, these are going to be the ones that are going to be the first to get censored. So just, just wait, man. The government really doesn't like people being able to trade money in private because how are they going to get their share? Yeah, like, oh hey, uh, you know, I, I, oh hey, man, uh, give me, uh, give me that cup of coffee. Here's five bucks. The government comes in. Hey, where's my cut of that? You didn't build that. The wider crypto scene is often imbued with an anti-establishment spirit. I, I I'm at a loss for words. This is coming from the radical left, who um, maybe 20 years ago, they were proud in their anti-establishment spirit. Now that they are the establishment, though, they, they really look down on that stuff, don't they? All the while, they still consider themselves punk rock. They still consider themselves the rebels. Oh, we're sticking it to the man. You are the man. Only a moron can't see that, okay? You fucking are the man. Its fans proclaim that decentralized blockchains will revolutionize finance. They would. This idea appeals to libertarians uh, or those who distrust the traditional banking system, which should be everyone with a functioning brain. But it also appeals to anti-Semites. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah, you know, uh, a million people are using this thing. But because three people we don't like are also using it, we're going to have to shut the whole thing down. Sorry. You know, those who believe banks hold too much power because they fear Jewish control over business uh, will be seduced by the idea of an independent or decentralized financial system. Well, let the free market decide. Oh, right. Your ideas can't uh, make it in the free market. I uh, forgot about that. Now, cryptocurrency can therefore be both a useful funding tool uh, as seen as a revolutionary technology which distances people from the and their money from elites and banksters. Yeah. The idea extends into the other industries such as tech that have tried uh, to quash white supremacists from their platforms. And one of the dreams of the far right is not just a blockchain cryptocurrency, but a decentralized future where they don't have to rely on mainstream structures, said Mr. Squirrel. They want blockchain blogging websites, blockchain streaming websites to escape deplatforming. Uh, no, that, that is actually a lie. That is not true. The last thing the right wants is a decentralized platform that can't be censored. They want to be in charge of a platform that they get to decide what to censor. Because uh, you know they, they wouldn't be able to cope with uh, not being able to censor the left either. Only people like us actually want true decentralization and freedom. Others' angst is grist to their mill, uh, breathless pearl-clutching exposés about powerless political dissidents using cryptocurrencies are uh, transparent smear campaigns by hirelings of the political and economic establishment that fears the erosion of its power, said Greg Johnson, author of the White Nationalist Manifesto. So you're going to take a true statement, but because a, a bad person said it, it can no longer be true, right? Like That's what they're trying to do, because uh, he's not saying anything wrong. As long as Bitcoin and its ilk are decentralized, the ability for far-right groups to use them will remain. Intermediaries such as Coinbase and Binance are another matter. But crypto still has plenty of disadvantages that may stimmy extremist adopters. In May of current year minus one, Monero reached uh, $480. Now it stands at $150. Bitcoin has shed 40% of its value since November. Oh, you mean it's, it's all speculation? Wow, who could have predicted that? If you just use it as an intermediary, it's not, it shouldn't hit you that hard, but whatever. Yeah, so remember, the same people that are calling to censor and regulate crypto now so they can continue censoring and deplatforming people they don't like, keep an eye on them because their turn is coming. Once they get their wish and they're next in line to be deplatformed, they're going to come to you with tears in their eyes begging you to save them. And when they do, just slam that door in their face because they get what they deserve.